Welcome to the demonstration video of SCIG Push Infusion presented by the staff from the Dr. John Akabudu Center for Bleeding and Rare Blood Disorders. Prior to starting any infusion, the first thing you want to do is wash your hands. A good two minute hand washing is best with soap and water and dry your hands. If you do need to use the alcohol hand sanitizer, make sure the sanitizer is at least 60% alcohol and only use that if your hands are already clean. So the next step is to clean the surface area where you're going to be working, just with soap and water or a disinfectant wipe. So wipe it down and let it dry. The next step is to gather your supplies. So lay down some paper towels to work on. Then you want to gather your product, your alcohol wipe, one for you and one for the vial, spike and syringe to draw it up with, the needle that you're going to inject yourself with, some gauze after for taking it out afterwards and then the sharps container and then for our purposes we're going to be using a little dummy tummy to show the injection process so the next step is to prepare the vial for administration here's the vial it should be clear light yellow or brown tinged but not cloudy and not any precipitate which is floaters in the solution. So next we want to pop the top off the product. So while this stuff is packaged sterile, infection control tells us that just the act of popping the cap actually contaminates this inside part. So that's what our first alcohol wipe is for. So just tear open the wipe. We should use chlorhexidine wipes, which is what these are. Um, Unless you have an allergic reaction to chlorhexidine, then you would use alcohol. So give it a good rub on the inside there, and then let it dry. So the next step is to prepare the syringe to draw up the product. You'll notice on the syringe that its end is not covered, and we have to keep that end sterile. So open the package from the other end And just keep the syringe in this little plastic boat to keep that tip sterile. Now for the spike, it has all of its sterile ends covered, so we can just open that. And this is the mini spike. So this is the end that will go into the vial. This is the blue cap is where we will put the syringe. <laughs> and the white cap is an air vent. We never touch the air vent. So just hold on to the spike, take the blue cap off, pick up the syringe by the barrel, sterile to sterile, and it twists on. So now we're going to draw up the product. So we've got the syringe with the spike attached and our vial with the dry bumper on it. So take the cap off the spike, hold on to the vial, and push the spike into the vial. It might feel like you're pushing the bumper into the vial, but the spike will go, that's okay. Then you turn it over and draw it up. Careful you don't shake the vial because it's very bubbly. So you wanna draw it up. Now these numbers on the vial, between the one and the two is a mil, between the two and the three is a milliliter, between the three and the four is a milliliter, and so on. So you want to draw it up pretty much to the nine and you'll see what starts to happen is the spike starts to come above the water line. So in order to not get air, you have to just manipulate the vial up on the spike until the spike is just barely in the vial. Then continue to draw up the remainder of the fluid. And you've got your product. It's good in the syringe for two hours because the immunoglobulins are proteins 
Proteins like to stick to plastic, and that's what these syringes are made out of. So any more than two hours, the manufacturer can't guarantee that you're getting your dose because it's all interacted with the plastic and the syringe. Mm -hmm. So once you have your product drawn up into the syringe, you take the needle that you're going to infuse with, And these needles come with an adhesive dressing. You just pull it apart and this is the sticky side. And then the needle. You want to attach the syringe to this end. So what you do, you hold the needle, take the syringe off the spike. Don't just take the spike out of the vial, take the whole syringe off. Careful not to touch that sterile end. Take that cap off and just drop it, sterile to sterile, and it twists on. So I'd like to mention right now that if you're going to be giving yourself more than just the 10 mils at that sitting, what you would do is draw up a second syringe to this point where it's still sitting on the vial and you haven't taken it off of the spike yet. So just have that sitting waiting until you're ready to infuse the second syringe. So once you've attached the syringe with the product in it to the needle, then we have to get the air out of this tubing, which is called priming the needle. So hold the syringe upright so the air goes first, and then prime the needle to the point right here where the metal starts inside the tubing. So hold it upright so the air goes first, gently push on the plunger, and if you can't see that spot in the tubing, then watch for a needle drop or a, a fluid drop coming out the end of the needle guard. And there it is. You can see a couple of them there. So after everything is ready to go, then you have to choose your site. The sites that you can choose from are listed in the education binder. When you do choose your site, make sure it's at least two inches away from your belly button, two inches away from any surgical scar tissue and about four inches away from previous sites. And you want to rotate your site, especially if they're still at all red. So have your site selected, and this is our little stand-in for the sites. And this is what the second alcohol wipe is for. So you want to go in one direction quite briskly, and then in the other direction. And you want to clean an area about the same size as this dummy tummy, so a couple of inches by a couple of inches, and then allow that to dry. Once the area is dry, you want to get your needle ready. If you're close enough to the table, you can just put the syringe on the table, otherwise you can rest it on your lap. This is just a guard that protects the uh, needle cover, so just pull it up and off. You want to fold the wings back. Make sure to fold the wings back evenly. There's little ridges on there that need to line up. Then you hold it in your pointer finger and thumb of your dominant hand and just make sure to squeeze the wings back from the needle. Then you take off the needle guard, pinch your skin, and then straight in. Let go of the needle let go of the pinch. And then you want to put a dressing over top of it or a piece of tape. If you don't secure it down, what it'll do is, because the wings were stored in a closed position, they'll want to close again, and you'll find the needle starting to pull out. So you put the dressing on or tape or something to hold it in there. Okay. So then you just want to peel off the paper part, which is easier said than done. Peel that off and discard it. The infusion of this product is at one mil per minute. So one mil is from the 10 to the nine, from the nine to the eight and so on. So as I start infusing, I'll check my watch or you can also set your timer on the phone and notice when I start and then slowly infuse. It's fairly thick and at first it's gonna feel like there's nothing going in. What you do is you put pressure on the plunger and sort of maintain that pressure and then it slowly eases in. So I'll go. Now I'm at nine mils, it's been a minute. If you go in 
If you infuse it any faster than one mil per minute, then once you get to the next mil or the next marker on this uh, plunger, then just stop the infusion and wait for the rest of the minute. Then you can start up again. So continue to infuse one mil per minute until the infusion is complete. It's not uncommon for the site to turn red, to get a little bit swollen, and it might become itchy. Those are all normal responses to infusing this product, especially the first few times. So now we've completed the infusion for that syringe. If you need to do a second syringe into the same needle site, this is how it's done. You'll have the second syringe ready, all drawn up and waiting. Take the syringe off the needle. Make sure not to touch the sterile area. Take the syringe off the spike, sterile to sterile, it twists on. And then you can just continue to infuse your next 10 mils into the same site. So once you're all finished, the syringes, all your infusions for that sitting, then you wanna take the needle out. Just peel the dressing off your skin, lift up one wing. It's very hard to get this plastic dressing off of the wings. So just lift it up, dressing it all to one side. And then lift up for the other side. Have your gauze that you're going to use to put pressure on ready. Pull the skin straight out and then put pressure on for about a minute, maybe two minutes if you're on a, a blood thinners. So to dispose of the sharps, these needles have a unique feature in that you can just close the wings over them and they Velcro shut. And then that all is still considered a sharp, it goes into the sharps container. As well, the spike is considered a sharp, so that whole assembly can go in the sharps container as well. The rest of the packaging can go in regular recycling or garbage. So that concludes our demonstration video of the SCIG push infusion as presented by the staff from the Dr. John Akabudu Center for Bleeding and Rare Blood Disorders.